In this TV Crazy Man video, I look at some wacky goofs of the second season of the 66 Batman TV series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. We'll check out some funny mistakes and other interesting tidbits with props, effects, acting, and plot points on things that you may have missed the first time around. Good evening, friends. <laughs> the true crime fighter always carries everything he needs in his utility belt, Robin. In the episode, The Duo Defy. When feeding the seal a fish at the end of the episode, Adam West is clearly shaking the fish to try to make it look like it's alive. The story you are about to see is true. When it's over and the boy wonder is properly waxed, let me know. In the episode, The Joker's Provokers, when Batman takes Robin out of the wax chamber, which we know has to be a fake statue that we're supposed to believe is Robin, something tells me that the statue doesn't weigh near as much as Burt Ward. When Batman and Robin are back in the Batcave, removing the wax from Robin, Alfred hands Robin his gloves. Burt Ward initially puts the gloves on backwards. Don't you read one, sir? Of course, Alfred. In the episode, The Cat's Meow. When the Catwoman's henchman hands her the phone upside down, she seems to annoyingly put the wrong end to her ear. Of course, with this show, it could have been a joke, but something tells me she was actually surprised because a split second later, the phone is turned around correctly. However, knowing that, he'd think that we'd think he would not return there. Therefore, he did, and so will we. In the episode, it's how you play the game. Colonel, what are you doing here in Gotham City? Batman and Robin are climbing the side of a building when Colonel Clink from Hogan's Heroes pops his head out of the window and talks to the Cape Crusaders. Well, say hello to Colonel Hogan for us. This is weird because Clink is a World War II German and he even mentions Colonel Hogan trying to escape his prison camp. It's a wonder he hasn't tried to borrow your bat rope to put another one of his escapes. Has Hogan remained a prisoner of war for 20 years? He was basically there voluntarily to spy on the Germans. Shouldn't Batman have told Clink the war is over? On a side note, Batman was on ABC TV and Hogan's Heroes was on CBS, which mixing characters from rival networks just wasn't done back then. I knew he'd think I'd think he'd think I'd think he'd come back here. In the episode Caught in the Spider's Den, Robin has been knocked unconscious. Batman is ordered to carry him by the Black Widow. If you look carefully, you can see that it appears that Burt Ward may have thought this scene was kind of funny, as he looks like he may be giggling. Everyone remembers the classic Batman Green Hornet team up, but have you ever taken a look at the very confusing timeline of their meeting and how they actually exist in each other's universe? Be prepared to have your mind blown, Bat fans. The Green Hornet and Kato had their own show at the same time as Batman. The Green Hornet was played by Van Williams and Cato, of course, was played by the legendary martial arts star Bruce Lee. Everyone knows about the famous team-up between the crime fighters on the episodes A Piece of the Action and the second part, Batman's Satisfaction. But did you know that Batman was shown to have existed on the Green Hornet series has a TV show on the episode The Secret of the Sally Bell in December of 66 before the famous team-up? A few weeks before that, in November 66, the Green Hornet was mentioned by Bruce Wayne as a TV series he wanted to watch on the episode The Impractical Joker. It's about time for the Green Hornet. You're right, Bruce. And before those strange TV series mentions, the Green Hornet and Kato made a cameo in the Batman episode The Spell of Tut in the September of 66, where it seemed that both sets of crime fighters were aware of each other's existence. Aren't you in the wrong city? On special assignment for the Daily Sentinel. You know my aide, Cato? Robin, the boy wonder. Now in March of 67, when Batman and Green Hornet team up for a full two-parter on the episodes of Piece of the Action and Batman Satisfaction, and Batman and Robin act as if they don't know that the Green Hornet and Cato are good guys. The Green Hornet is in our fair city for a piece of the action. Not a mention of having heard of each other's TV series either. It's like holy confusing continuity, Batman. Batman doesn't even start to realize the Green Hornet and Kato might be good guys until the very end. Maybe he meant to uncover the entire ring, who knows. The Green Hornet, a crime fighter? Okay, so maybe this team up happened out of order, but how do you explain how Batman is just a TV series on the Green Hornet, and the Green Hornet is just a TV series on Batman? 
Well, I guess it's not above the realm of possibility that Hollywood would create their own fictionalized accounts of the Green Hornet and Batman within the Batman universe that didn't resemble the shows as we know them. Holy unlikelihood. Or, it was all just a giant goof done for laughs, and I shouldn't be taking any of this so seriously before my head explodes. Have you short-circuited Batman's brain? Also, in the episode A Piece of the Action, Batman is supposedly stuck on a giant glue pad. But it's only his cape that is actually against a giant glue pad. How is his arm stuck to the cape? All he had to do is walk forward and take his cape off. You know, it occurs to me that the team-up of the Green Hornet and Batman was likely the first live-action superhero team-up ever. I can't think of any others that might have happened apart from cartoons and comic books. Let me know if I'm right or wrong in the comments below. In the episode, Batman's Anniversary. After stealing a golden calf, the Riddler, this season played by the Adams family's John Aston, leaps out of a ballroom window. If you listen, you can hear him landing on the floor outside that window, which sounds like it's just a couple of feet down. The next angle shows the Riddler falling from a three-story building. During the fight scene in a flooded bank, Batman and Robin can be seen fighting the Riddler's henchmen underwater. But it's easy to tell they aren't really underwater. Their capes aren't even floating. I guess it's pretty slick when you think about it. They didn't even have to get wet to film this underwater fight scene. They just put water in front of the camera by filming through something, I guess maybe like a fish tank. In the episode, The Spell of Tut, Robin is standing above alligators on a plank. It's clear these vicious animals are nothing but very large mechanical toys of some kind. Or was he merely shedding crocodile tears? Shame would have to hide until tonight because he can't travel during the daytime in those peculiar looking clothes. Now Batman is the world's greatest detective, and yet he and Robin seem oblivious to the fact that their costumes make them stand out as anything other than everyday ordinary crime fighters to the public at large. We'll set down in Pelican Cove just north of Gotham Point and walk down the beach just like ordinary people. Right? As Rain Man. Uh, just looking, thanks. I'll stand at the bar. I shouldn't wish to attract attention. Of course, this is done for a laugh, but shouldn't Batman know better? In the episode Green Ice, we can see an injury Burt Ward sustained during the filming of the series. Look towards your left at his right arm and you'll see where it's been wrapped up. They did try to hide it, but you can still see it. Crime fighter always carries everything he needs in his utility belt, Robin. Oh, Batman! Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, comment, let, let me uh, know what you think. I really appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Thanks. Until tomorrow, same time, same.